Hi, welcome back to System Administration. We're going to be making an Ubuntu 2004 production worthy on a Raspberry Pi 3 whatever. Now, this is a follow up to the video I just made, and it's going to be a little shorter. Well, a lot shorter, really, uh, because we're, what we're going to do is power up that Pi and get everything running from the point we run the script. So we've got the Pi here and we're going to start this thing up. OK, so the Pi is now starting up. I'm going to uh, allow it to get started and then I'm going to go ahead and log in. Now in the last video, I showed you all the little idiosyncrasies with Ubuntu on a Pi that may give you some trouble to start out with. On this one, we're just going to kind of run straight through the process. Okay, once you reach a login screen, the login is Ubuntu and then a password of Ubuntu. Go ahead and log in and then do a sudo space dash s to get a root shell. Now keep in mind, you may have to try to log in several times. It's, I don't know, some weird bug on the Raspberry Pi image that I'm using from uh, Ubuntu there for the Ubuntu 2004. Uh, so just be aware of that. Don't get frustrated when you have to keep logging in Ubuntu, Ubuntu. It's not that your password's wrong. It's just something that the system has not started yet. Okay, once it does actually let you log in, you saw that that screen refreshed up. So you enter the uh, current password again, and then you change your password to a new password. After you update the password, it'll go ahead and log you into the system. So now that we're in the system, we'll go ahead and do our sudo space dash s, enter, and we'll become a super user do object here. So we super user do shell. So now we're going to run our script remotely off of a website. Okay, now we've got our command type there. We have our bash dash c and then our curl statement to rip the information or rip the script off of the remote site. Let's press enter and see what happens. So we'll accept that, no warranty. Now, if it falls into um, some package management error that the package manager is already running, then just run the script again until the package manager is not running. Of course, you can look for it if you want to, but waiting for it is probably the most reasonable thing to do. Okay, our script has finished, so everything has been installed, removed, updated, configuration's good. Last thing for us to do is reboot and see if we can log into it under the new IP address. All right, it's booting back up. The new IP address is 192.168.1.199. So if you want to log into it, it's 192.168.1.199. That gives it a pretty private, normal, pro private IP address on a normal LAN. So the, well, it looks like it started up. So let's go over to the left quadrant and see if we can log in. All right, so here we are. We're going to go ahead and SSH Ubuntu at 192.168.1.199. Nice. 199, there you go. All right. So that's a good sign that's saying, hey, you've got done this before. So, yes, let's log in. Password is a password, that's why I changed it to. And it looks like it's going to let me log in. Let's see what happens. There we go. So this is the MOTD, the message of the day that comes up. It shows what changes were made in the system. And you can sit there and, uh, and go through and Make sure you like all those changes. That's it. That's all there is to it. Now you have a production worthy, no warranty uh, version of Ubuntu. There are little idiosyncrasies. This is a short video. If you want to watch the full long video, I'll leave a link to that here at the end. I hope that everything's working out for everybody really well. And I look forward to talking to you in the future.